Coach, once again, you guys had a huge lead in that third quarter, crept up the game. It looked like you guys handled it at least better at the end of the third. What would you, what you I make? Yes, we did. I mean, it's just something that we have done when we've had leads early. Um, you know, and it's, it's all stuff that we can control. You know, it wasn't anything that was out of the ordinary. It's all stuff that we've seen before. You know, whether it's stealing out to threes, um, you know, we scored 28 points, but it didn't feel like it. It felt like we scored like 15, and then it trickled over into the fourth quarter where we didn't score much at all. So <clears throat> the guys are aware of it. Um, I told the coaches, you know, what are you going to go to the huddle and say play hard? Like they know what we need to do. Um, so it's just something that we – you know, have to be aware of. Uh, it was just like the Denver game last week. So, and that's that's the one thing I did tell him is this is just like the Denver game. But I thought Tory, his energy and effort tonight, like bailed us out of it. Um, you know, to have a double double, um, and the way he played, the defense that he played, I thought it it gave us a lot of juice. And um, I thought Ish was also in that he didn't score, but the defense and the the attitude and intensity that those two brought um, helped us in the when we were kind of reeling for some juice tonight. Curious with Chris, um, not only was he hitting, taking threes, but he was taking them even when there was a little contest. Usually he waits for it to be wide open. What do you think about the I way? I mean, everybody's been telling Chris to <laughs> shoot. I mean, you can see his, his three-point numbers tonight and his catch shot numbers are really good. And so he understands that for us to be effective and when Kevin gets doubled or he's on the backside, when Book is in pick and roll, like he's going to get that shot. And I thought J.O. did a really good job of slashing tonight that created some shots for us on the backside. But as, as far as Chris is concerned, I mean, it's never thought I'd have to tell a Hall of Fame player to shoot the ball. <laughs> Kevin, he's driving Kevin crazy. Book and Kevin Durant are going nuts because they all want him to shoot. And uh, I think one thing that happens when you don't shoot that shot in rhythm, it, it throws DA's offensive rebounding off because he's getting ready to rebound. Then when the guy doesn't shoot, he's got to get back out of the lane. And that can take away from our <clears throat> ability to get extra possession. So when you have a shot, you know, we've been a let it fly team from the jump. And we don't want guys thinking about it, but especially Chris Paul. With campaign being a healthy scratch, is is everything good with him, or just trying something? No, he's fine. Um, it's just a de a decision that I made to try to do something else with that second group. Um, defensively, having bigger guys out there. And the other part is putting the ball in Book's hands a little bit and letting him, you know, play point and, and orchestrate. Um, so it's just something that we're looking at. With the way the rotations have been, trying to mix and match and yeah. see what works and doesn't yeah. down the stretch, how have guys been receptive to that as far as, you know, your number being called maybe this night, not the next yeah. night, that type of thing? I think if guys weren't upset about that or competitively upset about it, I'd be surprised. Um, everybody's accepted it. Um, when I have conversations with guys about their roles and what I'm planning to do, um, I go directly to those guys so they know what to expect and guys, you know, they, I wouldn't like it, but they understand what we're trying to do. It takes a great deal of sacrifice. And sometimes you have to, you know, give something up to get what you want. And I'm asking guys to do that. Um, at the same time, we're, we're learning a lot about our team and, you know, this is our way of trying to find a rhythm because we don't have 30 or 40 games to do it. You know, once we got Kevin back, we, we had seven games, you know, so you're just trying to figure out the combinations, what looks good from the eye test um, and what looks good when we watch film, when we go home and then the numbers um, based on those combinations. How does Landry, how do you feel like he looked in that role with Devin? I think it's something, we've done it before with those two guys. Um, you know, he's, 
Landry always gets this bad rap if he doesn't knock down three or four threes. Um, but I think he's more than that. I think his ability to defend and we can switch a lot more with him because he's 6'5 and he's pretty strong. And then he spaces the floor. You know, he hasn't shot it as well as he would like to, at, at, not tonight, but um, I think having him on the floor, teams have to honor that. And um, he plays with great force. He understands what we do. He plays in point five really well. Um, so it's something that we hope to grow because we think having those like size guys that are like 6'5 to 6'8, 6'9, being able to switch, it may help us um, keep teams out of the paint. And hopefully, you know, we don't give up as many threes. I thought we gave up threes tonight on offensive rebounding. Um, that, that, that was the deal in the first half. And then the second half, we just didn't have really good steal out defense in particular in the third quarter. Back with Tori, what you said about his energy you know, tonight, and you know he's been asked to do a lot, whether start or most of the season, and stepped up well. But do you feel like he's adjusted well with the small sample size and back into the six? I mean, every <clears throat> just about every guy coming off the bench has had to make adjustments, but I don't know if anybody's made more than Tori. Um, he came into the season not knowing he was going to start. He started most of the year, and then he ends up coming off the bench, and nothing's changed for him. Um, except the minutes, but he's made an adjustment. You know, he was an offensive rebound guy, spot up shooter, and then on the defensive end, he guarded the toughest guy. Now he's coming off the bench and he's still bringing the same effort, but his, his role is different. Um, and so I, I think he deserves a lot of credit for his mental stability to be able to have the capacity to take on new roles. And um, he's done a good job with it. He just just alluded to it uh, a little bit, but with the playoff berth in hand, does anything change as far as mentality when it comes to those managing those heavy minutes, or is it just chugging along, trying to still find that chemistry because there's a lot of work to catch up on? No, I think <clears throat> we're trying to build their um, capacity to handle those minutes right now, You know, allowing Kevin to have longer stretches. Uh, Book is pretty much where he's going to be, um, probably bump up two, three, maybe four more minutes to get him to 40. Um, we typically get him at about 36. And Chris, you know, we got to get him to, you know, 36, 32 to 36. So, you know, this, this game was good because they had longer stretches. And I think that's what builds um, the endurance and capacity to handle it without getting to that, that exhaustion limit. And so we, we're hopeful to you know, win these games that we're playing, but we also want to build cardio so that those guys are ready because uh, we're grateful to be able to play in the playoffs again. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Thanks, thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach.